In this video, we discuss the difference in safety between Medellin, Colombia and Cartagena, Colombia with Carlton from Carlton's Travel Adventures. Follow along. Hey, you watching them on right now? You're watching DC Born Rob on YouTube. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. You're watching DC Born Rob Racing Borders. I'm DC Rob. Again, as I said in the intro, we're going to be speaking with Carlton from Carlton's Travel Adventures. But first, I got to say thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of the flight crew, thank you for flying with us and have a pleasant day. That's right. I got to say thanks for everybody who supports this channel financially. Those who comment positively in the comment section and offer advice for other viewers too. Because remember, the whole reason I do this is to help keep you guys safe. Guys are going to go regardless of what I say or anybody else says, they're going to go. So let's do what we can, what we all can to keep them safe. So again, I have Carlton today. Let's jump into the interview right here. Okay, guys. So again, we are here with Carlton from Carlton's Travel Adventure. So everybody who's been asking me and who's uh, asking me to check in on him or reaches out once or twice a week saying, hey, where's Carlton? Can you check on him? He is alive and he is still living in Cartagena. And if you're not familiar, I'm going to just open this up by saying that Carlton used to live in Medellin, Colombia. I watched him before I moved there yeah. and then I met him there and, and he's my buddy as of now. So he actually moved to Cartagena, Colombia shortly. I mean, what, what, about a year or so ago? How long ago was it, Carlton? 18 months. 18 months ago. So he's been in Cartagena. So and I, after all the things that have been going on in Cartagena and Medellin at the same time, who better to ask these safety questions with than Carlton? So Carlton, jump right in, man. Tell me if you want to just tell everybody you are the winner first. How you doing, man? Remember, remember when we were talk, chatting in uh, Sweet Georgia Cafe a couple of years ago, talking about YouTube, and I talked to the channel, and you were helping me out with the, you know, with the channel. That was cool. Your, time flew by, man. Damn, it flew by. Yeah, man. I watched you before I came there, so when I saw you, you were like a celebrity. But it was the spot, man, the Sweet Georgia and Laurelis, when Rob yeah. owned that. Yeah, that the first spot, spot, man. Every day. We, I, think we, I think we met there, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's cool. where you meet that's everybody. Awesome. I tell people, and I, and I still tell people to the day, right? no longer owns the one in Loud Ellis, but go over to the uh, Sweet Georgia Cafe and Sports Bar in Poblado. Poblado. He owns right. that one. So whenever you land, like I say, the first place I go, if I don't need a haircut, the first place I go once I check in is over to Sweet Georgia Cafe. Yeah. Get me some wings and some. People green. still go to the other one too in Loud Ellis. I heard it. That's still, people still like people still go, but that, that, that's not his. Right, so, right, right, yeah. It's not another, another topic. Know. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah that's man, another so, topic. Yeah, I, yeah. So I think I've, I first came to a uh, Colombia. Actually, moved there in about I think it was like May 2018. So it's been it's been a, you know a little over five years. So it's been going pretty good. Most of the time has been was been spent in Medellin, as you know. Uh, like it, uh, my friends are still there. They all want me to come back to Medellin, but you know, moved up. I love I like living here because of the ocean. I have an ocean view apartment, you know, and that's always, when I thought about retiring, I want to retire on the ocean. I want to be able to look at the ocean. It kind of calms me down, looking at the ocean every day. You know, if I don't go there for a week, it still calms me down to see it every day, you know? So, and there's no water in Medellin, man. There's no ocean. There's no, there's no way to call it lakes, beautiful lakes, to, you know, so nothing. So that's why I moved there after so many time and so, so long in Medellin. But as far as talking about safety, you said the first question, well, yeah. Well, let me let me let me do this. Let me preface this for everybody. But I have about 20, 23 questions right now that I want to run run through. So if you can answer as quick as possible, because otherwise we'll lose a lot of people. You right. know, after ten minutes, everybody's attention span is gone. So if you can yeah. answer them in less than a minute, and if anything, we need to yeah, we're gonna jump right into it. Yeah, exactly. So let me jump into the first one. Uh, can you share your overall experiences with safety during your time living in both Medellin and Cartagena? Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, I've been coming here for a while, uh, Colombia, for about 10 years or 11 years before I, you know, overall, between uh, vacations plus living here. So, I've been around a while, and I would say Medellin is getting worse and worse, in my opinion. Like, people have a different opinion, but I have people that's actually leaving Medellin because it's getting, safety issues getting a big problem. It's called Palamine issue, 
uh, the robbery issue, kidnapping. You you just listen, listen to your your broadcast all the time. It's always something popping up in Medellin, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason I left because I must say either not good. I've been pretty lucky, you know, or combination of just making smart decisions and luck, if you want to call it both. You know, because I know any day something happens to me. I can go out today and something happens. So I'm not stupid. And I know you think it happened to me any, any, any day. But you got to be smart, you know. So I would say Medellin, I took some risk, which was mostly for the YouTube, you know, like inviting somebody to my house. I know she's trying to go pal me, and I invite her anyway. That's a seed in Tepro That was a risky, you know. But overall, I'm very, very careful about things I do, you know, as far as making stay, sure you stay in an apartment that has a, a doorman, uh, Pay the doorman fifty thousand pesos a month. You know, because that's stupid. Now they look out for you. You know, so I still do that right now. Where I'm living, in, it's a secure building, twenty four hour doorman. I gotta live in somewhere like that. And then I, I tip him every now and then. You know, he has fifty thousand pesos for one. Next month, the other one fifty thousand pesos. That really, they're, they're kind of shocked. You know, that's not normal for a Colombian to give a doorman that much money. You know, but it's fifteen bucks. You know, so it's not a big deal to us. And it help your safety. So if somebody comes up. They know that if somebody's coming to visit me, they got to call me first and they can't come up without talking to them first and they can't leave the building without talking to, you know, without me being with them. That's my instructions, you know. So this, this, that, I, did, I use that in Medellin, use that here. It'll give me some sense of safety and that doesn't help you around town. But I say this around town, dress like local, no fancy, you know, fancy Air Jordan sneakers, uh, no jewelry. It's just common sense. But for some reason, I think people, I don't know what it is. Even if you tell them things, when I had a channel, people would call me up sometimes and say, okay, I'm coming to Medellin. Uh, let me, give me some hints about how to, pay, how to be safe. And I give them all these, you know, advice how to stay safe. And for some reason, man, I'm at, I probably knew six guys. After I spoke to them, they still got scope out of me. You know, they still got scope. And most of it was around getting drunk. They go to a park of Genesis and they get drunk. I don't get drunk. I, I like to keep, keep my head around me all the time. I, and I probably got drunk when I was 22 the last time. You know, <laughs> I just like to keep myself, you know, uh, alert. You know, but every, almost in every instance, they got drunk. And when they get drunk, you're a target. They see you acting stupid and drunk, pick on that guy, you know. So just most of this common sense and the jewelry thing. I spoke to one guy. A buddy of mine called me and said, I got a friend coming to, uh, from Atlanta to Medellin. Talked to him about safety. I noticed that he had some jewelry on, you know, two or three gold chains. I said, man, first thing you do, do not bring those gold chains with you, you know. And you know what? <laughs> you brought them anyway, you know, just can't leave the gold chain at home, you know. I knew a guy who brought, a uh, when I was going to uh, DR, brought a $10,000 Rolex with him to DR. I'm like, that's a Rolex? Yeah, man, I forgot it. I had it on. Like, come on, man. You forget you had it on when you came on the plane? I don't think so, you know? So make dumb decisions, you know? So nothing happened to that kid. He's well, like 24 years old, kid to me, uh, with the gold chains. He bought him. I guess people like love their gold, you know? But it can cost you your life. You know, it doesn't make any sense, you know? I look around here now, I'm seeing more consciousness. I see guys walking around in groups, you know, three, four, five, and I don't see it in gold. I see one of it now and then. You know, but it's not worth your life, man. Leave that gold stuff at home. You know, uh, some guys might be tough guys when they're home. I'm from South Central. I'm from Philly. I'm from, you know, Chicago. I'm from South Side. And you got the attitude like, nah, man, I, 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 I'm I, from the hood and I can I can handle it. But you're not in the United States. You know, you, you, you're in a totally new environment. You're not in the hood. You can't carry a gun here. In the U.S., I had a license to carry. I had three weapons. You can't carry him. You can't get him here. You try to get a weapon, you're gonna be you get caught with it. It's eight years in prison. You want to be eight years in a South American prison. You don't make any sense. So you're vulnerable. You, you, you're not from here. So let's be respectful to people, you know. And uh, you don't know who is a made man here. You don't. You see some guy look five foot six, 130 pounds. Bump into him, you might think I'm a tough guy. Like hey, no, no, I, this cool man. I'm sorry, you know, my fault, my bad, and, you know, and walk away. You don't know who is, you know, uh, is made here. You don't know what can happen, they can do to you. So just be cool. You know, you're in your country, respect them, and you'll be okay, you know. And so safety, I think, gotten really back to Medellin versus Cartagena. It's gotten kind of 
worse in Medellin, in a more merchants coming there, they're buying property, they're living there, and they see as a target. It's not much, you don't make much money there. And especially now when you go, go into November, December, be extra cautious, you know, extra cautious. I get this question all the time. What's safer, Medellin or Cartagena? My opinion, if I'm living here, I think Cartagena is safer. It's my opinion, you know, uh, from living near in Medellin for, for so long. It's just, I think it's just, I live closer to downtown. I see, I see more police officers all the time. And from, from the incident that happened last week, uh, Wednesday or, or Tuesday, what it was, I see a lot more police. They're putting a lot more police in the streets. They, they're patrolling more and so forth. Even before that happened, I felt, just me, I felt safer in Cartagena than I did do in Medellin. Okay, you you literally answered like eight of my questions. <laughs> oh, gee, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna cross them off uh, my list. So let me ask you this: um, uh, Are there any specific neighborhoods in either Medellin or Cartagena that you would say stay away from, um, or, or certain areas that you should stay in, like Clock Tower? Well, obviously, in Medellin, everybody wants you know a safe, safer areas is a strata five and strata six, which is uh, Poblado and Loretta's. I lived in Loretta's all the time. I was there. You know, I didn't want to move to Poblado. To me, Poblado, you're more target because you're, you're more gringos there. You know, more wealth in, in Poblado. Um, so I never really wanted to, wanted to live there. I wanted to live away from all the gringos. You know, so I, I lived in uh, Loretta's all the time. But it doesn't matter because I mean, if they <laughs> if they're looking for people on a, mo on a motorbike. They can rob you anywhere. People got robbed on Setenta, you know, in the middle of the day. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? People got robbed on 33rd Street. When I was there, three brothers, big guys too, was standing on 33rd Street by a street Georgia. Dude went up to them one o'clock in the afternoon, showed a gun, give me all your watches. Middle of the day, you know. So it doesn't matter where you live, you know. And I got people who lived in, in like Strata four neighborhoods, and they said they were safe because everybody knew them and they treated everybody really nicely and give them some money every now and then. So it can happen anywhere, you know, but obviously nice neighborhood, theoretically, you should be safer in Poblado and, and, and uh, you know, Loretta's, you know, in Cartagena, I would say you stay in the neighborhoods closer to the central, like um, Boca Grande, Cabrera, you know, Marbella, Crispo, closer to, you know, the ocean, the nice neighborhoods. Uh, I think it's, it's obviously a lot better, but I have friends living, in like I said, one or two lives in, Neighborhood that's closer to here, but not, you know, during a, probably a uh, strata four neighborhood, you know, and they don't go out walking at night, you know, don't hang out with the wrong people, they don't hang out at the local bars, and, and they, so they're, they're paying a lot less, you know, and uh, depends on your budget, you know, if you have the right budget, you live in these neighborhoods, and you should be should be better, should be fine. But I say it can happen anywhere, it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. have, have you ever felt unsafe while living in either city? Can you give me a couple of instances if possible. If, so I began, I began to feel unsafe in Medellin. And, and people can give me your opinion, but I'm hearing people, no people that are leaving Medellin right now, actually packing up and leaving. Okay. Buddy of mine, two of them, they're in, in Thailand. They got this couple I know, they're there for years with a business and they closed it all down and they and left. They left, you know. Um, they're over in Spain now. So it's just, it, it's get to me, it's, it's, it's getting unsafe in Medellin. Um, and just got a lot of tourist people coming there and moving in, buying all the property. And, you know, it, it's just, it's just an easy way to make money, you know, because, you know, you know, it's kind of living, people, what, what they make per month. And you come there, it's just easier to rob a tourist, man, and get all their computers, get their lap, I mean, uh, their phones and, and resell it. It's just so, and rob them all their money. It's just, it's just, it's just easier, you know, I think. And, so, I mean, stay in a good neighborhood, that's the first thing, but you got to do all the safety issues, you know, to stay safe. No matter where you live, in a bad neighborhood, good neighborhood, it, it doesn't matter where. Well, here, here's one thing I wanted to touch on again. And, and again, this was one of my questions that you already answered, but I, I want to uh, stay on this for a second. People from the States or from wherever they come from in the hood, I'm from D.C. I consider myself streetwise, people from Baltimore, Miami, you know, Memphis, L.A., certain parts of L.A. We, we consider ourselves streetwise, so 
you know, we have that attitude. Nothing's going to happen to me because I'm streetwise. You know, right. uh, I'm too smart. But what I try to tell people is, as soon as you land, you're in a whole different hood. You you can't just leave that hood. You can't make a phone call. You're yeah. out of your element. Just reiterate what you said on that, that when you come in and you think you're streetwise, but it's, it doesn't mm-hmm. be there. You should be aware. It can help you be aware. And you're more conscious something could pop off and, oh, wait a minute, I need to get out of here. But still, you you can't bring that same hood. You can't bring your hood to that to that hood. When I go back to the States, I, I don't go back very often. You know, when I go back, I see, you know, it's, it's in some certain neighborhoods and so forth, it, it's getting bad. I mean, they're, the kids nowadays, they're, they're, they're tough guys, you know. You look at them the wrong way and they want to shoot you, you know. Seriously, you know, you cut somebody off and they're, even that's tear down, that's tear down, like, you know, you come over here, man, you, you can't do that stuff. I mean, because you're going to be, you're going to miss it. You're going to turn up missing. You know, so you got to change your attitude when you come here. Totally change it. You're not in your country. You can't carry a weapon. You can't fight back, you know. Uh, you can't. So you just got to be humble and re- give them respect, you know, and, and it goes a long way. You know, help them out if you can with some money here and there, you know, they actually look, you know, you know 50,000 pesos or something that people might know, uh, locals or whatever. Not say give it to everybody, but if they say I have one good friend or so that's a, that's Colombian, and they have some help every now and then. Let them all give them 20,000 pesos or 5,000 5, pesos. It's cool, you know. They're going to help you out, you know, and they're going to pre- might even protect you too. So just, just got to be humble and be safe and just be smart. You're not in the U.S. You can't carry your weapon. At one time they had... It was legal for you to buy those um, guns with rubber, rubber bullets. You no, know, they had those that my buddy had them in Medellin. They were they look they look real, they feel real, you know. But you had rubber bullets in them, right? And uh, it was legal to have them. I think it's a year or so ago, but they they changed the law. You can't have many. Americans cannot have many, you know. And I've actually seen a gunfight with the rubber bullet in, in Medellin one time, middle of the street with rubber bullets. I mean. And to me, it never made sense, made sense to buy them, really, because I'm going to a gunfight and I have a toy, call it a toy. It can't, it can hurt you, but it can't kill you more, more or less. But you, you pull, you pull a fake gun, and somebody has a real gun. To me, it doesn't make any sense. I never, never, never bought one. You know, it made any sense to me. But now you can't even have those. Let me let, let me ask you this because, well, first of all, you're you're right, and I've been saying this for a while. Humble yourself. I guess the older we get, we learn. You know, what's the positive going to come out of this? You know, so humble yourself. Just my bad. Because, again, like you say, you bump into the wrong person. You're thinking this little guy, he, I can take him. And you yeah. don't know who he is. Right. And, and you have this thing called disappeared. I yeah. mean, it's a term where yeah. you will be disappeared. Okay. Yeah. Disappeared. You will come up missing. But on this note, too, because... Uh, uh, a buddy of mine there now, Hammer, if he watches this video, a uh, comment that he carries, because I used to say carry my ink pen. You know, I got one of those sturdy ink pens that you can stab somebody and take the eye out. But th- that takes a physical altercation. When you're in the mix, that's fine. But before that, because he told me, he said, Rob, you, you may be too drunk. There may be two of them. You know, he may be beating you. He said, I carry pepper spray wherever I go. W- what do you think about carrying pepper spray? Do you carry it or do you recommend it? <laughs> there you go I got one you okay. know and you know it's good for dogs and it's good for you know if somebody has a gun look man when somebody has a gun just just don't you just give him whatever you got you know <laughs> and, and something we talked about talked about this last week about being mentally prepared to do it you know sometimes you know you just natural want to react when someone takes you right somebody put a gun on your jump jump on you get your weapon get your chain or your wallet you naturally want to jump, spike back. It's a natural reaction sometimes. So I appear myself mentally, right? Whenever I'm walking around, whatever. I walk, I walk nighttime sometimes in the dark. Uh, what, am I lucky? I don't know if somebody say you're lucky. I've been here so long, I've never gotten robbed, right? You know, knock wood. It can, I know it can happen tomorrow, right? So is it luck? I don't know. You know, maybe they might think you're Colombian, black Colombians, because you know where you dress, you dress real casually. And sometimes I used to wear these torn up jeans, real torn up jeans, look all raggedy. And Medellin did it for a long time. People say, we well, look, look like raggedy. I said, yeah, I don't want to look like I'm out of money. You know what I mean? Look raggedy. It's fine. So if you dress conservatively, you know, you have a better chance. But I don't know. Could be luck. But I know a lot of guys do that. Been there and never been, never been robbed, you know? 
People make a big deal out of Colombia because when it, whenever one murder or one something, something happens, they go, "Man, is Colombia safe?" The U.S. is not safe either. The U.S. should be fine. Somebody told me last week, "Man, I'm not coming here because the, the government rated a category a three or something. It's it's dangerous." I said the U.S. should be five then. I mean, look all the danger with the mass murders in the U.S. So it's matter. Even when I go to the U.S., I'm careful. Not because I'm U.S., so I'm not going to be careful in the U.S. I'm careful in Miami. When I'm, I'm at, I went to visit my sister up in New Jersey, I was scared. I'm careful in there. In Houston, you're from Houston. I went to see my son in Houston. Houston can be rough. I lived there eight years. Houston can be rough, man. Rough in Houston, you know. So I was careful there too. So it's not like I'm being extra careful here. I'm always careful around my surroundings, no matter where I am. You know, go to foreign countries. I'm also careful. You know, but pepper spray, yeah, I do have one. Most time it's for dogs if I'm riding my bike, but uh, I'm not going to use it if somebody has a gun. Put a put a gun in my face. You know, put a gun, yeah. Put a gun. Somebody got a gun. You, hell, you give me a pepper spray. That's totally exactly. different. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, just, just give, them, not give, them, give them, give them, give them, give them everything, man. You know, don't don't buy don't buy expensive phone. Buy a cheap phone. You know, and what I do, I leave the phone at home at night. You know, I have an S21. Nighttime is dark. I leave it home and I carry a cheaper phone. You know, you know, as a, I call it a drop, a drop phone. In other words, I. I probably kept all my old phones, you know, like six phones. You know, mm -hmm. bring an old phone with you, you know, carries, leave my all my charge cards at home and carry a bundle of money of 10,000 pesos, 20,000 pesos, nice bundle, 2,000 pesos in a bundle at nighttime. It's better to give somebody some money and they feel better and your phone, you know. So mentally prepared, somebody pulls me over at night when I'm walking home. Yo, man, oh, whoa, whoa, you know, here it is, man. Here it is. And I'm, I'm backing off. You can have it all. You know, it's not worth being shot, you know, and I don't wear any, all the gold I have is all in a safe in the U.S. Everything, rings, chains, everything. My my, my watch is a $25 watch. That's a black plastic. That's it. You know, just got to reduce the risk, man. Don't, don't tempt people. Don't tempt anybody. Exactly. exactly. So since you've been in both, both cities, and I've gone over some of the, the common scams that they're going to run into. But from your point of view, as an expat who's lived in both cities, what are the common scams that people are going to run into? And and, and is there a difference? I know, man, with the, the rappers and the ladies taking pictures and the taxi driver scams. And But are there any of them that are more prevalent in, in either city? And what well, should they be? Keep my heads up if you can in Cartagena, the biggest scam is a yellow taxi. I'm one of them, you know what I mean? It, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, they don't, they don't have meters here, right? So it's zones. You go by zones. You know, zone one might be minimum 8,500 pesos for zone one. Zone two might be 15,000 pesos for zone two. But nobody don't, knows the zone unless you're local. You know, if you're, if you're a foreigner, you don't know the zone. I get in the airport, and I wanted to uh, go from the airport to my house, which is... 15 minute ride at most, you know, that should be about 15,000 pesos. I get in the airport, sometimes someone charged me 40,000 pesos, 50,000 pesos, you know, and since I know what it is, I said, I'll give me my stuff back, you know. If you, if you can, if you have Uber or InDriver, another one called Codify, best thing to do is use those, you know. Don't be, don't be and don't use the uh, motor controls. I, I've never used one. All the years I've been going to, uh, DR, uh, all the years here, i have never used a motor contra. Those, those motors, never use them. Never use them. You know, first, they're not, they're not safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get an accident, one of those things, you might lose a leg or something, or, or it's all scratched up. I've seen people have done it. It's all scratched up. You fall off the bike. And if you want to, we're going to save $1 versus instead of paying $2, you pay one. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know, to, to use a motor contra. You know, well, that's so, to, well, let me ask you the taxis though. How do you avoid that when you get in? Do you say how much is it? Make sure that's yeah, established. Yeah, this, about, this, about, this about to get to that, right? Because um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes when people come here because of the exchange rate, if you like, ah, oh, no money, right? You know, so if somebody charge them fifty thousand pesos, go from the airport to uh, say say Boca Grande, it's like, oh, that's only fifteen bucks in the U.S. That'd be seventy bucks. So it's like, oh, I'm happy to pay that. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, but it's, it's bad because they keep doing that because because we keep paying it, right? Quick example, I had a friend here last month. It was downtown in Central. He's in, he's in Boca Grande. 
So he came down to hang out and drink and so forth. And I think it was like 2 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, he wanted to go back to his apartment. And the taxi driver told him, listen to carefully, 150,000 pesos to the ride back to Boca Grande. And he said he paid it. Whoa, why? That's right, it's about maximum 20,000. You know, 20. But I've heard more and more stories like that. And I've been, you know, right into it. So now I use InDriver, totally InDriver or, or Uber. And that's it, you know, never trust them. You know, and it's also not safe if you get picked up by a taxi driver or or even a motor concho with no record of the tag number. Think about it. You know, it's not safe at all. You can get mugs and no, there's a record of who it was. What do you mean no record of a tag? You mean you get in a taxi? Well, if, no, I mean, if you go if you go in Uber or in driver, there's a record of who picked you up. Their mm -hmm. license plate, oh, the yeah, car yeah, number, yeah. who it is and all that stuff. You know, you pick up a, a buddy of mine. I already was on Big Dog TV this a couple of days ago. He, he talked about it. He went and talked about it. He lives in a, uh, another barrio. He's coming over here to help me do some stuff. And I told him, look, I'll pay for your, your, your Uber for you. You're going to help me out. I said, no, no. I said, grab, you grab the motor concho because it was cheaper. And he got here in front of my apartment and he put his bag down to pay the guy. And the guy drove up for this, this bag. <laughs> Took, yeah, yeah, true story. He, talk, he talked about himself on Big Dog TV, so I, I mentioned it. Yeah, T took off with his bag. Just took off with his bag, you know? Nothing. There's no record. He couldn't. He, he didn't, didn't know the tag number. They went so fast. You know, it's a, it's a motorcycle. So they're small. And there's no record. If you're in an Uber or whatever, you have a tag number for the record. You have a person's name for the record. So it's always safer to get an Uber or something where they record the tag number and the person's name versus getting any strange... And there, there are stories also... Yellow cab, the yellow cabs robbing people. You know, I don't know person, but I heard stories of that too. So you can't trust them too. So, you know, yeah. And what are what are the odds too when you when you get out of the airport and the taxi drivers are out there hustling? What are the odds that your taxi driver is going to speak English? Um, about twenty percent speak English. Twenty percent speak some some English, right? Yeah, some English. Yeah. Enough to tell you how much. And yeah, yeah. It was 50. <laughs> and somebody told me talking. a story recently. I got to tell you the story too. This happened uh, this week too. So he was in, he stayed in a hotel and he had, uh, I think it was four or five sisters, you know, uh, that were here from the States and they wanted to go to a, a, a restaurant somewhere in, in, in the central. So they called a, a van, the taxi was a bigger one with a van type that's got four, you know, ladies. Mm -hmm. And he was with them to help him out, get in a cab, right? Tell him, you know, help him out. And the cab driver told him, you know, $50 each for each of them, $50 each. That's 200 bucks, 250. It was such a rip off, you know? <laughs> so he told him, wait, hold it. Cause he, he knew he, he lives there. So he told him, wait, hold it, don't pay that. And they, 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 might, they thought about paying it, you know? And it was just such a rip off. He said, no, 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 50,000 pesos for all of them. And this guy is surprised that he knew some Spanish, you know, help him out. But 50, 50 do US dollars each, they wanted to charge all, all those ladies, you know. So you just got to be careful with those cap. It's just an easy way to make money. Easy way to make money. You know, at least in what Medellin, that? you had it meters in Medellin, which was about better. True, true. What about public transportation? Buses. Yeah, they, they had the buses. I probably used the bus once. You have the same kind of car you got to buy like in Medellin for the buses. The, and, mm -hmm. uh, the thing about it, the buses, if you're in this area, you know, uh, you probably stay within the area, take taxi around. People that, you know, they're poor and they work here, but they live other parts of the uh, of the city, they'll take the buses. But most times we don't go visit other parts of this, the city. You know what I mean? We don't go there. You know, I don't know it well enough. Um if I if I go to uh, you know one or two areas that a friend might live, take the cab there because might not, bus might not go there. So I've been on the bus once just to use it, take it uh, you know way out of town just to check it out. But normally locals, I mean the foreigners don't take the buses. Okay, is there a tram or a train there? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Never... I think it's called um, Caribbean. I forgot the name of it. Yeah, there's one. There's there's yeah the local buses, bunch of local buses with the. Uh, locals take what there's no AC and they packed in there, and they have this like a 
like a trans uh bus that uh, AAC and the, and, and, the, and the government, you know, you know, sponsored that. So it's it's pretty good. It, it, it's when it gets packed, you know, a certain time of day, it just get packed. People crunching on you. When I took it that one time about a month ago, to go out of town, look at a car dealership. Um, you know, on the way back, it was a bad timing, and man, I was packed in there like this. You know, like like a train in New York, and then you worry about the COVID, people sneezing, people coughing in there. Like one experience I had, I didn't want to use it again. It's just, it's just not a good look. When I was going, it was em- almost empty because it was good. You know, wasn't uh, rush out, so it was okay. But coming back though, I was there for like two hours. Came back, man, it was just packed, and people were. I worried about the COVID. People are talking and they're sneezing. It's just I just don't use it. I use it once and that's it. But they do have it. Gotcha. Okay, few more questions because I know we the numbers start dropping off at the time. Let me ask you this: How reliable are local police or law enforcement in responding to any safety concerns you may have? In other words, are they going to help you out, and and are they going to be legit? In Medellin, you know, I had some instances when I had a, my member boy had to call the cops and. They showed up on time. They were, re- you know, reasonable. I mean, I didn't have a problem with cops in, in, in Medellin at all. I never did. All the years I was there, I probably got stopped once or twice. Once once, once it was in a car. I was coming home late at night from Pilato, and they stopped the car, you know. And uh, once they told I was, you know, um, I was American, they, they just rushed it off. It was no big deal. I was in, it's, it's, they have a lot of stops here. And I know that there's a lot more uh, roadblocks in, Medi- in uh, Cartagena. A lot more, you know. I've seen it a lot where they they block off a uh, road and they're checking every motor, they're checking every car. They're confiscating motor like crazy, you know. You don't have your paperwork together. They they snap snap it up and they got they got to pay to get it back. Storage and towing. You know, um, I've never really had a problem with cops. I haven't had running with them here. But they know I'm. I think they all know I'm gringo because they see me. You know, they are very very nice. A lot, lot, lot of tourist cops that are young, a lot of young ladies. A lot of young ladies are very nice. Young guys, like, like almost like teenagers, which probably are 19 or so. Nice to you. I never even had a problem with cops here. You know, I'm more co- problem with cops in the U.S. than I have here, tell the truth. You know, mm-hmm. I knew some cops in Medellin also. This guy, when I did I did a video of him, the sergeant. Um, so I must say, I have no experience with cops, no bad experience with cops. Just me. People say all the stories, but I never did. Okay, what about uh, for anybody who's thinking of moving there? Because ultimately, and don't let me forget this question I want to ask, because I personally don't. I can't recommend going or not going. But make sure I, 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 after this next question, you let me know, would you even recommend as an expat moving or, or, or living or even visiting, especially Cartagena? But what what are your experiences? I know, and for those who haven't seen Carlton's videos, go and look at those videos. They're still there. Again, he just told you uh, he interviewed a police officer. I watched his videos, all of them, before I moved there. Um, he brought in insurance companies for Sora or whatever the medical company was. He had sure. a lot of good information for those who wanted to move there. So, and because I was moving there, I, I needed that information. But as the, I know you had insurance in Medellin because of those videos. What's the difference between here, between Medellin and Cartagena? And have you had to use the medical, uh, the, any type of medical resource in Cartagena? Yeah, yeah. I, I, Sura is, is nationwide. So I, I've got I have Sura in Medellin, I have Sura here. And I bought a car, so I, I'm using Sura here too for my car insurance. Um, they're probably one of the better better insurance company, well known, you know. So everybody says stick with Sura, you know. Uh, when it comes to healthcare, in my opinion, it's, it's better in Medellin, okay? Um, and not, not only my opinion, I actually locals here and they tell me the same thing, you know. Uh, better hospitals, uh, better, um, you know, uh, doctors and so forth. Um, matter of fact, I even think about going back to Medellin if I have an issue, serious, something really serious uh, issue. Uh, you had the Pablo Torre and Uribe Hospital there in Medellin, one of the best hospitals. You know, when people talk about health care, you know, they, they have the impression that only the U.S. has good health care, right? People think that, you know. In fact, actually, somebody told me they wouldn't leave the U.S. because of the health care. And everywhere else is inferior, which is not correct. Public Tony mm-hmm. River Hospital, if you if you didn't know you were in Columbia, you thought you were in a hospital in New York or LA. I mean, seriously. And if you've been there, it's clean, it's beautiful, you have the top-notch equipment, 
good doctors that, you know, train overseas and so forth. You know, so I love that hospital. Even when I had, even though I had healthcare, Sura, public public healthcare, if I had, you know, sometimes I felt better as going to public toilet and rebate, um, you know, because it was faster, you know, to, to go there. And it, it, inexpensive. You can go there, emergency room and pay, you know, 20 bucks in emergency room, you know. So, and it was a good hospital. So, but here, thank God I've had too much experiences with hospitals here, but just from the Sura, um, uh, doctors, I'm, not, I'm trying to be nice about it, you know, <laughs> you know but I don't think this is as good as, as Medellin, you know. I had a lot more better doctors in Medellin, even with Sura. Sura is a public uh, healthcare. I had a lot better doctors, I thought, you know, but better, better experience. I just haven't had that experience here that is not as, to my, my opinion, not as good, you know. Uh, and a hospital, went to one hospital once, I think I had a big stomachache or something, whatever. But I had to wait forever, never got in. I mean, I had to wait for stomachache for like, I don't know, six hours, almost left. And that didn't happen in the public in Reba. So healthcare, to me, hands down, is better in Medellin than in Cartagena. Okay, excellent. Well, I appreciate and, you coming on, Carl. And the last question, but would you move here or not? It, it, it yeah, that, that's one. Let's end on this. In between Medellin and, and, and Cartagena, would you recommend visiting Ina? Because, again, I can't. Uh, I, I won't either say, I, I'll, I'll just say I'll go, you know, but I can't say recommend that someone else would go because it's, everybody has a different level of, right. of being comfortable. But would you say, would you recommend, can you say, Carlton, I recommend going to Medellin or I recommend visiting Cartagena? And the same thing with living in either city as well. Now, you know, I've had that question. And when that incident happened recently here, you know, I've seen people saying on some of the comment section in a couple of mm -hmm. channels that I'm never coming to Medellin. I'm never coming to Colombia. Colombia is so dangerous and everything else. Look, man, I've traveled a lot of different countries. Mm -hmm. There's danger everywhere. And I don't know your per the person, their personality. Everybody's different personality, right? Some people feel really safe in the U.S., okay? And they're not going, they're not going anywhere, you know? Personally, I would say go anywhere. Go to South Africa. Go to Spain. Go to wherever you want to go, Australia. Look, you're going to die eventually sometime, you know? And you try to run away from death. It could happen in the U.S. You could be in a Walmart in the U.S. You could be in church in the U.S. You could be in a bowling alley in the U.S. Nook comes in and spray the place and kills 18, 20, 30 people, you know? So why just enjoy yourself? If you want to come, come. You know, just follow the rules. Just, just be safe. Don't drool like we talked about it before. Follow the rules. You know, take a cab. I mean, a, a Uber. You know, if you want to hire a per personal driver, you can do that also. If you feel safer, some guys have personal driver that they know. You, you probably can recommend somebody a personal driver for somebody in Medellin. You know, if you mm -hmm. want somebody to take this guy all the time, you feel safer. They'll take you where where you want to go. Same here. You know, I can have somebody that's a personal driver that's, that knows English, take him to where you want to go. It might cost a little more, but so what, you know? So if, if you just follow the rules, go in groups, don't bring any jewelry, no expensive watch and no Rolex. Come and enjoy yourself and live here too. I, I'm not worried about dying. I'm, I'm going to die someday. I know that, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to live my life. And it means, you know, if I die here, fine. But the thing is, if something happens to you here, people say, oh, see you, 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 something happened to you in, you in Colombia. What happened when something happened to you in the U.S.? You know, do you say that? No, it's just, I say, if you, if you want to move here, if you want to visit here, come visit. You know, people visit every day and, and you're safe. Just don't go getting drunk and do stupid things. Ladies can come here. I know ladies that's been here forever, a few of them, you know, black, and they had no problems, you know, just got to follow the rules. Go. Wherever you want to go, just go and visit it. And don't worry about it. That's my opinion. The key thing that you said is follow the rules. And <laughs> by following the rules is don't go out getting drunk, don't wear jewelry, just the basic things, and stay out of certain areas that you shouldn't be in, just like in yeah. the States. Yeah. Like and I know, said, I'm watching, I'm, and guy, guys with the with the Tinder stuff, you know? I've used Tinder just, just to mess around, you know? But the, the Tinder girls, just, just, just don't be so stupid. Get a girl from Tinder, don't know anything about her, Bring it back to your 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 Airbnb, which I never. If you watch my channel, I don't like Airbnb for that reason. I like uh, hotels where you can check them in at the front desk, get their ID before they come up. 
You know, it's a safety issue. You know, but guys get drunk and they bring some Tinder girl over or whatever, and they, and they look so so innocent. You know, and they get they get have problems. You know, just 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 be smart. Just be smart. You'd okay. Be fine. You brought up you brought up early because you know I'm in Houston and Houston is, is, is can be dangerous too. And, and every all these major cities can, but there's certain areas. I mean, my area is safe. And and like I said, we have a place you live in Sugarland. There, there's a place near Sugarland called the yeah. jungle. What yeah. the hell am I going to the jungle for? So enough to stay comply with the rules. Don't go in those areas. Definitely don't go in those areas at night drunk. You know, yeah. and and here how you be driving. The best thing about living there is you don't even have to drive. But one question we will get, and, and you can shoot me this offline if you have somebody, because somebody now is going to ask. Whoever made it to the end right now is going to ask for that personal driver's information. So if you want somebody there, you got somebody there that you want to feed some business to, let me know, because everybody always needs that guy. Right, Obviously, right. everybody knows I have Andres in his company in Medellin. So if you need a driver, well, airport, if you, drop you, off you, wherever. You, 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 use Uber, you know, mm-hmm. or in-driver. Just use them. I mean, you, you, your, your name is going to be saved. You, I thought to my when I get get one at night, they have to use that code now. They have to give you a code, like a tip digit code at nighttime, an Uber, you know. So when they pick you up, they ask for the code, make sure it's okay. And then when I when I when I call them and they give me a, the person, I kind of take a picture on my phone of the license plate and everything else, you know. If it's late at night, just get a picture of it, you know. And if you want to feel safe, send it to a buddy yours or whatever, you know. But once it's recorded, you feel better, you know. And 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 it, it, it should be safer. Never heard somebody taking an Uber or an driver when they got mugged. Never heard anybody, you know, because I did hear one case where the Uber, the Uber driver drove off with their with their with their grocery. <laughs> I know, but then it was funny. I said, "Man, when you I, they didn't follow up on it, they're, they put the grocery down and they went to another store and they came out. And the Uber driver took off with the grocery in the back of the car. You know, that's the only thing I heard. But the safety yeah. issue is safe." Yeah, I use nothing but Uber. 99% of the time, nothing but Uber. But we also need to say that Uber is still illegal, um, officially illegal. So the driver may be a little bit paranoid. I haven't heard of anything negative happening to whoever's in the car if they get pulled over and stopped. Because my driver went and somebody that was working for Andres, my guy in Medellin, we got pulled off right at the circle, right before the airport in uh, MDE in Medellin. And he was nervous and he wasn't even an Uber driver. They took his phone. They wanted to see if he had the app on there. He had the app, but he had the app from our point of view as a, a, a rider, not a driver. But he was actually nervous. I heard they take your car. I mean, these people are nervous as, as Uber drivers. But the best thing is you don't need to come out of your pocket with cash. You know how much it is. And like you say, there's a record. A record. There's the communications back and forth, numbers, all that stuff. You know who's picking you up. And then it's it's a well, non-issue. You know, it's, so I recommend it's, it's it's prevalent here. I use Uber almost sometimes three, four times a day. I mean, if I'm gonna run around stores and so forth, go to grocery. Um they don't like it, but but I never had a problem with it. I never, mm-hmm. never got stopped or anything. Every now and then the, the drivers get the text drivers get uh pissed off and they do you know strikes and they had a strike in, in Bogota yeah. this past week you remember it, Tuesday or Wednesday uh uh-huh. three days ago a couple days ago yeah right right so they, they talk about that but I've heard stories and when I was in Medellin about they pulling people out of the cars and beating them up on I never had never ran into it never knew anyone person that, that ran into it um so I never had never had a problem here with it so you know people use it for you know never had a problem yeah. There you go, people. You heard it from VX Palace Medellin, Colombia, and Cartagena, Colombia. Anything you want to end on? Any advice or anything you want to pass on before we close it up? No, man. It's, it's, just, just live your life. Come enjoy yourself. Just stay safe, man. Just, that's it. Live your life. You can, you can, you can die anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, sure I think that, and, you know, and people have the wrong impression, I think maybe because of the news, that more people, a lot of people die in here. If you hear a couple of cases like you report on TV, if you look at the State Department website, I think a lot more people die in Mexico than than, than Colombia. Check it out. You know, a lot, a, a lot, lot more die in Colombia than I mean in Medi- in Mexico than they than they, they they die in uh, in, in Colombia. A lot more. Just check it out on the State Department website. So I wouldn't worry about it. There you go. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming on this morning, uh, Carlton, on a, on a Sunday too, man. Appreciate your time uh, well, going out. And it's poor, it's the rainy season now. It's pouring rain. I mean, everything went flooded. So I'm stuck inside on a Sunday. It's perfect timing. Good. Okay. Excellent. 
All right. Well, thanks, Dalton. We'll close it down now. All right, guys. Thanks, remember Dalton. to just thanks, to Dalton. See that. All right, man. Talk yeah. to you later. Bye. Headed to Medellin, Colombia. See my guy Andres with Nomad Travel for safe airport pickups and drop-offs and tours. Contact information in the description below. Join me on social media. I am DC Born Rob Official on Instagram. I am DC Born Rob Official One on TikTok. I am DC Born Rob O on Twitter. Don't be like this guy right here. You're you're just so stupid. I, I had to send you a video to let you know you're so stupid. That's right. Don't be like this guy right here. Join me on social media.